Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a progress update video for this 1-6 scale scratch built German Tire 1. In this last video, a lot of progress has been made to the tank's rear plate and engine compartment. Start with the tank's rear plate. We can see that pretty much all of the detailing on the rear portion of the vehicle is now complete. This includes the sheet metal fenders, which are the initial type. On the fenders, the fenders themselves are scratch built out of sheet metal and are all soldered together. Now these fenders are the initial first production versions. They differ in the later production versions of the Tiger One in that later versions when the side skirts were added to the side here, a extender plate was mounted to the fender. And then a third version, which is actually the more common version, would be a new fender design that was hinged that would go up and down and it would have a hinge flap over here that would flip up so when the tank would be on rail or when the side skirts had to have been removed for transport versions the little piece would be hinged upward so that the vehicle could have clearance. These versions here on the initial ones were bolted hard right to the vehicle to the vehicle's fender mounts that were discussed in the earlier video and are on solid. They are not functional as per the real one. Moving up, we can see the tank's toolbox and the mounts here for the tank's jack block. The toolbox on these early initial production tigers are mounted a little bit differently than they are on later production versions. On later production versions, rather than the toolbox being mounted vertically on the tank's hull, they would be mounted horizontally on a little metal shelf that would go in this position here. The straps on the initial one are secured in place via wing nuts and on my model I made it functional. There's the toolbox there. Over here we can see the mounting system. There's uh, two brass angle supports. Everything is all soldered together and when mounted to the model, weld beads have been added. The weld beads act as both a uh, detail element and also help secure the component to the tank securely. A similar setup was used here on the jack block mount. The jack block mount that you see here is right off the East Coast Armory.com production line and is used um, for King Tigers, for the jack block that are found on the Armor Tech King Tiger. It too is also functional. The jack block will be fabricated later once the tank is uh, nearing completion. Moving our way to the tank's jacks, we can see that the jack mounts have been added. The jack mounts themselves are resin and are straight off the East Coast Armory.com product line. The jack mounts are fully functional in that they will secure the jack to the tank and open up as they would on the real vehicle. Over here we can see the wing nut that would secure everything together. This part here would hinge downward and the top part here is also hinged. The jack mounts securely right in this position as follows. Moving up from the jack mounts we can see here the initial Tiger 1 antenna base. On the initial production Tiger 1's the intent was to have the antenna brought into this through the fan area here into an antenna base which we mounted right here on the tank's rear hull. However this idea was was abandoned and the antenna was kept over here on the tank's upper deck in the fighting compartment. The mount was still welded to the deck or to the rear plate and was pretty much became an ancillary piece. A small cap was added to cover up the antenna base and was really never used. Later on these mounts were only found on the initial production Tigers and were deleted and or not even installed on later versions that had the FIFL system and which led on to the mid-production and late production Tigers. Moving along we have the Tiger 1 starter plate which was added. The starter plate itself was is the EastCoastArmory.com resin version 
and has been backdated to that of the initial production Tiger One. The East Coast Armory version is that of the early Tiger One. The difference is that the early production Tiger One had a small mount and a clutch for the engine starter. It was a little clutch lever. These were added a little later on. The backdated version, it also mounts to the hull differently than the early and progressive versions of production. On the other versions, they mount in a little different way. Over here we could see that the mounts themselves are completely in line and are vertical. Later on, in later production versions, when the Tiger One had heat shields added to the exhaust, the geometry had to change for the mounting. So rather than being vertical, the plate would be vertical and we could see here that the, whole, that the mounts would, would have to be canted. The way the plate itself works is that when starting the engine manually, you would remove this cap via that bolt there. This guy then would then fit into this section here. This hole, I'll mount it right back here again. This hole that you see is the guide for the starter crank, which would be inserted into this hole, which I will demonstrate with this scrap piece of uh, brass or resin. It would be inserted into the hole, and there it would plug into the into the the starter, and you would actually turn the engine over. Only obviously it would be down here. These two electrodes here is how you would be able to hook it up to a battery to or uh, to jump start it, and uh, you could actually jump start the engine via these two electrodes. There is a uh, blueprint floating around on the internet that has a Volkswagen Beetle or a Couple Wagon, and it has the the, the diagram on how to jump start your Tiger One with the uh, the Couple. Towards the left and right, the exhausts, if you notice, have been covered up. Uh, this just tissue paper here is just to protect them during the construction, to keep uh, any unwanted paint or primers to uh, ruin the paint job of the weathered exhaust. Finally, ending the rear plate, we can see here the mount for the no-tech taillight. Uh, the the no-tech taillight's right here, and for the no-tech I actually used the Dragon plastic kit version that was spare from my Dragon Schwim Wagon that I built last year. The light itself is uh, moderately, it's acceptably detailed. Uh, it has the, the flip-up blackout light. What was added to the kit piece was I added the lenses that we can see here. We have red, we have orange, and then we have the blackout green. These pieces are dyed clear plastic and I have it all hooked up to an LED light. This model will have lights and other features to it. And here I'm going to test the light system with a simple AA battery that are taped together. Obviously I'm going to hook up more professional and more proper electrical into the vehicle once the piece gets installed, being a battery box and a switch. But this is just to test the, the system. There you go. As we can see here, the uh, the lights are on now. And there's there's the blackout green light. For the conversion, what was simply added was a small LED. And the LED was actually ground and turned down on the lathe to make it fit inside the small little cavity here. But the, the system worked very well. These early no-tech lights were found, or these flip-up no-tech lights were found on the initial production Tiger Ones. Later production versions replaced the flip-up no-tech light with a tubular light. And this tubular light is pretty much found on all German AFV tanks of later production. Moving past the tank's rear wall, we can see that I have been working on the tank's engine compartment. 
this model will be receiving a full engine compartment detailing and I'm doing this because the tank doesn't have anything holding the engine hatch down. Typically on Tiger 1's, especially early Tiger 1's, you have the FIFO system here and which has these two big uh, tubes. These tubes are kind of in the way and they keep you from getting access to the engine. However, since this tank does not have a FIFO system, I will be able to get to the engine, which is why I will be detailing the engine compartment. The engine compartment itself is all fabricated out of sheets of plastic, Lexan, and aluminum. All the detailing has been added, or is beginning also to be added, to the tank's compartment. Over here we have the tank's torsion bars. Now all these details here are just for detail purposes, they are not functional. We have the bulkheads for the torsion bars. We have here the axis plates that are, would be on the bottom of the vehicle. Here we have two types of air ducts. This here would be your firewall. And over here and here are your fuel tanks. Tiger 1's had four fuel tanks. They had two on the bottom of the hull and they had two larger ones over here on either side of the sponson followed by a radiator and cooling fans all these details will be added later over here we have the tanks idler adjuster system and idler mounts on the tanks rear wall we have over here would have been the reverse side of the tanks engine starter cover plate and these two holes here for the exhaust. Now, there are a lot more details that are going to be added to this plate here in the coming weeks. The biggest hurdle and the most difficult part about making this interior was the fact that I had to detail over the functional suspension. Remember, this tank has a full functional suspension and I had to cleverly camouflage the equipment for the functional suspension while still keeping the suspension functional. In addition to all these added details we could see here that the tanks fire or engine compartment welds have all been added. The welds as I mentioned previously from my other components add uh, a detail element but are also used for structure. In the next coming videos, you will see the engine compartment get further detailing, including some more accents over here on the rim. The rear wall is going to get its exhaust cooling ducts. And the tank will be getting its snorkel storage tube, as well as a drainage, a drain water spout right here on the bottom of the hull. In addition to all the details of the car compartment itself, I will also be fabricating the tank's fan and radiator systems. This will all be in the next video. And that concludes this project update video for this 1-6 scale static scratch build German Tiger 1. Stay tuned for more progress videos and more detail components. And don't forget to check out eastcoastarmory.com. Thank you.